everyone welcome back to Eastwood Cottage Garden today is a lovely balmy 66 degrees and sunny we've had some terrible weather on the past few days uh, it's been super super windy yesterday it was sunny but it was super super windy and which made it very cold um, and then the weekend it was just raining and and sleeting and a little bit and just windy and really not good so today I thought I'd take you along with me as I did my garden walk and we would make this a mid-March garden tour. I've noticed uh, through looking through my windows and getting out in the garden a little bit that a lot of stuff has started to break dormancy and a lot of stuff has put on some blooms. Even from yesterday to today, there's a lot of more blooms in the garden. So I like, thought you'd like to come along with me as we explore the garden space and see what is blooming in this mid-March of 2024. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and we are going to take a look. So we're going to start here in the fenced garden area. I'm hoping that I tried to wait for the sun to go down a bit. So I hope it is not too glary for you. Um, I had to have to put sunglasses on because it's really very bright. Um, but here, I'm just going to say this is my scabiosa that I got that was actually blooming about a week ago. Uh, that bloom has fallen off, but there are a lot of other buds that are coming up. So I'm very excited to see them in their full fury when it's blooming. Um, the irises in the middle here are starting to put on a lot of foliage. I cut them back uh, earlier in the year in a garden cleanup and they are starting to come back. Um, and these scabiosa that I had already had are starting to put on a lot of uh, new growth here. Along with the penstemon here I have one on either side it is flushing out and starting to grow a lot along with the this is my tiger lily it's a it's a red tiger lily it's very beautiful so it's it's starting to come out I cleaned it up and it's pushing its new foliage already which is very early in the season so these are this is one of the roses that we trimmed back and as you can see it is starting to flush out uh, with its new growth. So I'm excited to see that. Um, and I noticed here, I don't know if you can see it, but right, let's see where my finger is, right about there. Um, and then here, these are, a lily that I got. I planted last year. They're a summer blooming lily. Um, and two of the three bulbs didn't seem like they had much life in them. Um, so I'm very pleased to see that all three areas are, have come up, are coming up this year. So I'm excited to see what they are going to do. They're like a creamy peachy color. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see them. And then here's my whip cord arborvitae that I think is just so adorable and unique in its foliage. Um, so, and this has put on a quite a bit of growth as well. So my kaleidoscope abelia is starting to put on some of its red foliage and flushing out with some new growth, which is very exciting. And this is the pot of violas and pansies that I planted up in a video and they are doing very very well I'm very excited about them it's such a I can see them from my kitchen window as along with the abelia and it is such a, a welcome little pop of color to see when I'm washing dishes and just kind of hanging out in the kitchen and this is the other tiger lily that is inside the garden that is putting on new growth and I noticed also that my phlox back here is putting on new growth here and here. And this is my other penstemon. Um, so things are waking up and coming alive. I also noticed that my vaca minor is starting to put on its little spring blooms and they look very festive. My garlic chives are definitely on a mission, including the ones that self-seeded. So I will need to cut these back, but the main plant 
is doing quite well. I'm looking forward to getting these in and using them to, to dehydrate them. Um, they're very delicious dehydrated. They're good, not dehydrated, but they're extra delicious dehydrated. Along the front part, or the gate side of the fenced-in garden, um, this is the remnants of my uh, Irish reticulata. I had one bloom. I didn't think it was going to bloom, but I had one bloom, and it was very beautiful. With the candy tuft is starting to put on its spring blooms as well. Very lovely. Everything is flushing out and growing. My sedum is starting to put on its new growth and looking very lovely. I'm leaving the leaves in this area for the pollinators. Some of the areas I cleared out, but I'm leaving the leaves in this area for the pollinators. And this batch of candy tuft is growing leaps and bounds and doing very well. Coming down here, coming past my massive patch of dianthus, this whole thing is one dianthus plant. One. Crazy. We have one of my hellebore plants and my hookara, which is doing very, very well. Along the back side of the fenced-in garden, heading toward my woodland garden area, um, I still have to put mulch down to cover up the landscape fabric. Um, I probably will pull some of it, but leave the parts that's you know the plants are actually embedded in. I'll leave that there, and I'm going to put an order of compost in, and hopefully that will be delivered this week to be able to mulch over the beds. But these are. These are tiger lilies that were my grandmother's that were moved here, um, moved to this location. They were further back in the yard originally, um, but they are a double tiger lily and they're really, really pretty in late summer. Very nice blooms. And here are the hellebore that we planted in our spring first planting of the season video, along with the wintergreen. Um, I don't know if this is, it, these are where the berries were. So I'm expecting this to bloom out. Um, it's a think around April time. And here are some hellebores that were here before I planted these last year. And they're just doing their thing and blooming out. This is another one of the hellebores that we planted this year. So it just kind of alternates hellebores and winter greens in this area. So this is a little more glary. Um, here's the Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow. I need to come and trim this back because as you can see, the new growth is coming in. So I'm gonna trim these back probably sometime this week. Uh, my hookara here is coming in, starting to flush up nicely. And back here, there are some columbine that are gonna be coming up and a bunch of hellebore in this area. Some blooming, some not blooming, but it's just really exciting to see them. This is called Carnival Rio. And I think it's very beautiful. These are some of the snowdrops that have since gone to seed and some more hellebores and snowdrops in this area. So I wanted to kind of work on creating some kind of a bulb lawn. Uh, so this is in the long border area. And in here I planted some crocuses. And these are like giant crocuses. They're very, they're very big for crocuses. So put my hand down for reference. <laughs> yeah, these are pretty big flowers. And they're very nice and very cheery. So I kind of interspersed them in this area. Next year, 
hope to get more. This past fall I planted like 520 various bulbs of crocuses and a woodland mix and a whole bunch of varieties of daffodils and some Luca gems or snowflakes. Coming towards the front yard, pardon for the shadow, I'm going to try to get around here. I did more plantings of the giant crocuses in the front here. And they're looking very cherry. You can see these from my bedroom window and it's very nice. So this, in this front border, things are starting to bloom out or leaf out. Here are my Sunjoy Barberry that you can see in the sparkling sunlight that they are starting to leaf out. And so is the Coreopsis, and the iris here is starting to put on some new growth as well. So this week I'm going to be working on expanding this flower bed a bit, like I said, to create a little pathway that leads to the maple tree up here. Here's the mum that this is going to get divided, and I'm going to be adding this to the expanded flower bed, dividing it and adding to the expanded flower bed. And here are some more of the candy tuft that are starting to come into bloom. And I don't know, in the garden tour that I did at the end of February, there's just a hint of this tiger lily. And you can see how much it's grown. And also, there's a daffodil hill that here that wasn't there, that wasn't in the video before, but it is coming up. Um, and hopefully we'll be blooming soon. Um, and as you can see here, I have a, pardon my shadow, I'll come around to the other side. Coming around this side, for a better view of the planting that I did this fall of daffodils and the snowflakes or Luca gems along the front pathway of the house. So I trimmed back these Fucara and they're starting to flush out. These are underneath the maple tree. And also you can see some more daffodils that I planted this fall coming up. Just wanted to focus in on this Fucara. This one's called Delta Dawn and I love the way it changes throughout the season. In the summer it's bright green um, but in the cooler weather, the red foliage comes out. I think it's really, really pretty. So this is the area that I call my maple border because it's beside the maple tree. I trimmed back some GM and they're starting to put in some new growth in the center. And as you can see, the grape hyacinths are doing their thing in all their splendor along with the vinca that is in this bed as well. So. And they smell very good. It smells like candy over here. So, and they are all along this border here. I'm working on putting some edging in this border to keep the weeds from the neighboring property out um, through the fence. Um, so we're still in the process of doing this. Jeffrey was helping me, the person who helped me do some tree trimming. He came to help me with this. So he'll be back here this week and we can continue working on that. So also, um, these are some more tiger lilies and these are gonna come out and be put in the front flower bed um, as I expand the front flower bed, I'm going to take some of these out, especially this patch right here. The patch along the fence, I'm going to leave that, but this patch here, I'm going to move it to the front flower bed. Coming towards the orchard bed. Some more sun on this side. There's some more of the grape hyacinths coming in. And the, the red twig dogwood. See that. Try to get it to focus. There we go. The red twig dogwood is starting to come into 
flush. Um, so in the recent clean out video, I cleaned back these Artemisia wormwood silver mounds and they are continuing to put on some more foliage, which I'm excited about. So we'll see what they do. We'll see how they do this year. I liked them in the beginning, but they got a floppy uh, and then they didn't look so good. So this is the Walker's Load catnip that we um, we planted and you can see it's flushing out. It was just pretty much a bunch of sticks before, but now it's flushing out. And I, oh, this is, and it's, it's amazing how much things start growing once the warm weather comes in. So this, these right here, this and this, and this was not here a couple days ago. These are Salvia Midnight Model. So they are starting to do their thing. And this rose bush, this is a popcorn rose, uh, drift rose, and it is almost fully in leaf. Trimmed back my yarrow in a clean out video and as you can see it is definitely putting on some foliage in the middle the foliage the brown that i that you see around there is the foliage that i've left behind so i'm going to have to come in here and tidy this up a bit more now that the new foliage has come out and i'm also noticing that my here this is Agapanthus, Little Prince Agapanthus. So it's a shorter Agapanthus, but it is starting to put on some great dormancy as well. I'm very excited about that. All three of them are doing. And here's some more of the Sunjoy Barberry that is starting to leaf out as well. And here is the Liriope that I cut back that is also started to spread. I'm going to see what it does. Um, if it gets really bad this year, I'm going to pull it up and plant something else in its pat in its way because I don't know that I want it spreading everywhere in the garden. Uh, if you see here, there's more columbine coming up and more yarrow breaking dormancy. So here is more of the or more of the bulbs that I planted of crocus, varian crocuses or croci, however you pluralize it, coming up all over the yard. So I can see these from my office window, and there's some. I don't want to show you my trash bins, but there's some more back in this area as well. I don't know if you can see that back there. Uh, it looks just very cheery when I'm looking out my office window. Coming into the orchard, this I can also see from my office window. Um, the bulbs that I planted in this area have started to put on their show and it's very wonderful and here is a little tete-a-tete Daffodil looking cheery and happy. Also looking happy and doing well is my plum tree that is putting on. Let's see if I can hold this and not drop it and not step on bolts. Putting on its display of bulbs, of leaf, of for the blooms, blossoms, flowers. Hard to get that word out for some reason. Coming around, so I planted a bunch of, this is part of a woodland blend that has the little tete-a-tete -tete daffodils in it. It also has the winter aconite here in it and 
it has two, they're like little hyacinth looking plants, but they're not hyacinths. I will get the name of them. Um, but they're starting to come up over on the other side of the property. I'll show you them. So I think I might have to replace my blackberries, which I'm not really super sad about because they were extremely thorny. So I'm going to go for like a thornless kind or maybe um, the winter gold raspberry uh, to see what that's like. But on this side, we have the raspberry bush that we trimmed back in a clean out video. And you can see it is starting to put on its new growth as well. So on the peach tree side, you can see that the peach tree blossoms are getting ready to open up. I think we have one more day where it's gonna be freezing or just below freezing. So I'm gonna to have to cover these up uh, if the blossoms are further along, uh, cover them up so that they don't get frozen. I think that's gonna happen like next week. I was looking in the, the 10 day, I think that's gonna happen sometime next week. So I'll keep my eye on that. But you can see I planted more of the woodland blend underneath the peach tree area, going into the crepe myrtle area. Uh, and I planted some bigger daffodils back here that should be blooming pretty soon. But I think it's just, it's just very, you can see little pops of color when I'm working throughout the day. And it's just very exciting. the winter aconite coming into the woodland area see it's pretty mossy because we've had a lot of moisture which I think looks very very pretty a bit cottagey um, so here we have some more of the woodland blend that I put in this area and we have some more wood some crocus winter aconite and this is the one i was telling you about i think it begins with an s um this plant here and they're starting to come up there's some that are uh like purple and white in this mix too but they haven't started to come up yet so this what i like about the winter blend it's supposed to provide you a series of bulbs series of blooms of varying types for about a month um, so it'll always change every day it changes so some more crocuses in here the tete a tete daffodils and the winter aconite and another one uh, what is it called I will get the name and I'll put it on the screen But this is my, the very first little daffodil that put, showed his little face here. And you can see my primrose is starting to put on some foliage growth. So that's exciting. And these, I just, just love these. The pink in Paris or Paris in pink, just love them. And my ferns that made it through the winter. So I'll cut back that foliage when I start to see more of the, the new fronds coming up. And there's a bunch of daffodils that I planted in back in this area that I'm very excited to see what they're gonna do. Around my ornamental cherry tree are a bunch of daffodils and some of the woodland blend that I planted. So these big bunches of daffodils have been here for several years, clearly. Um, and then I planted some new ones to kind of supplement them along with a woodland blend to give it some added cheeriness. And this, I don't know what happened to this daffodil plant. Um, something happened to it and the daffodil petals, the flowers are very bizarre, um, but there's a bunch of them. 
on here and they all look crazy like that. So I'm not sure what happened to that one. So I'm trying to look down and not step on a whole bunch of the foliage that's coming up. We should walk around, make a wide berth. But as you can see under the tree, I planted more of that woodland blend. Ooh, look at this one. This is a threefer. see that? That's three flowers coming from one plant. That is pretty cool. And some more of the crocus, the winter aconite. Well, that's pretty neat. And so if my friend Neil is watching this, I'm showing you that we do have daffodils here in the U.S. And they like to shine in the sunlight so none of these were open yesterday uh this is what they've all opened up today which is very exciting and there's some more bulbs down here that i planted so these are more of those blue flowers that are going to come up so you can see some more foliage coming up here. Uh, it's just so exciting. It's so pretty. So. Here are some more crocuses in the lawn. Lawn, I'm using the word loosely for what it's worth. It's terrible. The grass is terrible. Um, I don't know if I said the EPA came to do some soil remediation and they gave us all really really terrible sod so none of our lawns in this area look nice at all anymore so i'm actually trying to get rid of the grass um, and create more flower beds because um, the flowers and shrubs and things are prettier to look at anyway so coming over to the deck steps flower beds. This is the Peter Cottontail yarrow that has put on an enormous amount of growth in the past couple of days. I uh, also have some bulbs coming up here. I thought I only planted one bulb, but apparently I planted more than one bulb. Um, here is supposed to be gera um, perennial geranium, but I think the um, squirrels got to it and pulled them out so I'm kind of upset about this there's another one of the popcorn drift roses that's breaking dormancy i think i see some growth on my nine bark that's coming up um so that's exciting as well so i'm looking over here to see that my uh, um gardenias have survived the winter they have a little bit of winter burn but they survived so i'm happy about that this is the mirroring bed, but it gets a little bit less sunshine, um, so things are a little bit further behind. I had to come in and put some more compost in to build up where I planted the plants. And again, you can see the geranium. I think it's just the roots. I think the squirrels have just decimated it, so I'm going to have to get some more of that. So I hope you enjoyed this mid-March garden tour. It was very nice to be able to get outside in this lovely weather and to share my garden space with you. I encourage you to step outside and take a look at your garden space, even if you're still covered in snow or even if the weather's kind of a bit grim, just, you know, maybe step outside, take a look, see what's happening. Um, as, as the weather warms up, it seems that things start to break dormancy and change uh, on a daily, even hourly basis. So it's just really nice to be able to get out there and see what's going on. Even if you just have a balcony and just pots on your balcony, just take a look outside, hang outside with your plants. I hope that you are doing well. And I thank you so much for the subscriptions, um, especially the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. I really appreciate the shares and the likes and the comments. I'm really enjoying this community and sharing my garden with you. If you have any comments, uh, please let me know. Any questions, please let me know. I hope you guys take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.